G'day guys. Today we're going to be taking a look at how you can read comic books, magazines, or just view images on your GB300 and SF2000 handhelds. We will be focusing on the GB300 today, but the steps are identical for both handhelds. Let's get into it. We're over on our Windows 10 computer now, and we've just gone over to the Cayman's GBA JPEG Viewer download page, which I will link in the description below. This is the main tool we'll be using to convert our images to a compatible Game Boy Advanced ROM. It is quite an old program, around 21 years old at the time of filming this, but it does still do the job. We just want to click download now at the top, and you'll also need your magazine or comic book converted to a set of images. Ideally, you'll be using the CBR format, which is already an image archive, and you can simply extract it. For this test, we'll be using the very first Nintendo Power issue, which I've just downloaded and extracted from archive.org. We'll just go to our downloads folder and we'll take a look at our Nintendo Power images. As you can see, it is just a folder full of JPEGs. One page of the magazine is one image. If the books you want to read are PDFs, you can simply use a free online tool to convert them all to images. With that said, we'll go back to Google Chrome and we want to go to the Pine Tools Bulk Image Splitter website. I'll also link this down in the description below. Since the Game Boy Advance's screen's resolution is so small, we will need to split each page of our magazine up into smaller chunks. I've found splitting it into five equal chunks vertically is the sweet spot, but if you want more detail, you can split it both vertically and horizontally into five by two chunks. On this website, click choose files, navigate to your folder full of your comic book or magazine images, and we want to press Control A and Enter. You can see it says 114 files selected since we do have 114 pages. Next, under options, we want to make sure it's set to split vertically. Again, if you do want finer detail, which does increase the file size, you can go both. Just be aware, 32 meg is the maximum Game Boy Advance ROM size. And I found you can either get 180 pages split into five or 90 pages split into five by two. So if you were wanting to read a larger book, you may have to split it into multiple Game Boy Advance ROMs. Next, under Split By, we wanna make sure Equal Height is selected and change the quantity of blocks to five. You can scroll down a little bit, leave the output the same as the input, and we just wanna wait until all of our images have been processed. Since we are splitting 114 pages into five chunks, we should have 570 total images. We can see here 570 pieces were generated. If the number doesn't quite match up for you, just wait a little bit longer for it to finish processing. Once everything's finished, we can scroll down a little bit and click download all files zipped. This can also take a little bit of time to download, so just be patient. If you have a slower computer, Chrome might say the page has stopped responding. Make sure you click wait and not exit page. Once it's finished downloading, we can close off Chrome and go back to our downloads folder. Inside, you should have the GBA JPEG viewer zip as well as a pinetools.com zip. We want to extract both of them. You can simply right click, go to extract here. Once it's finished extracting, we want to open up our Pine Tools folder just to make sure all of our images were split correctly and there's none missing. It does mention there's 570 total items and each of our thumbnails does look correct. With that confirmed, go back to our Downloads folder, open up GBA JPEG Viewer, which we extracted, and inside we want to run GBA JPEG Packer.exe. From here, the first thing we want to do on the right hand side is click JPEG Options. In the top drop down, we want to change it to resize to 432 by 288. You don't want to select cropping since you do lose part of your image. With that selected, click OK. Next, we want to go to Add Files at the top, navigate to the Pine Tools folder we extracted with all of our split up images, and we want to press Control A to select all and press Enter. On the right hand side, it should say JPEG size. Once it's finished processing, it should say a number. It's important you wait until all images have been processed, otherwise, when compiling the ROM, you'll only have really low quality thumbnails. You can see it started processing. If we scroll down, you can see how fast it is processing the images even on this low-end Celeron. Scroll down to the very bottom of the list and wait for the very last image to be processed before continuing. Once everything's finished, at the very bottom of the program, it should say average size as well as total ROM size. From here, we just want to click Build GBA ROM and give it a file name. I'll call it Nintendo Power. It can take a little bit for it to create the final ROM, so just be patient. At the very bottom left of the program, it does tell you how far along it is. Once it's finished, you should get a pop-up. Just click OK, and we can close this program off. We just want to double check our Game Boy Advance ROM was created, and it was NintendoPower.gba, and it is around 19 meg. From here, just going to insert the micro SD card from my handheld into my cheap USB SD reader, and we'll pop it into the computer. It's up to you where you want to put the ROM. You can either use the GB300 tool to insert it into the main Game Boy Advanced system menu, or you can just drag it into the GBA folder inside ROMs if you have multi-core installed. Going to 
copy our Nintendo Power Game Boy Advance ROM, go to our SD card. I'll be doing it manually and not using GB300 tool. So just opening ROMs, go down to GBA, and I want to paste it in here. Once it's finished copying, we want to go back to the root of our SD card, and we want to double click make ROM list.bat. We can see our Nintendo Power.GBA was correctly inserted. Just press spacebar, and we can safely eject our SD card and pop it back into our GB300. We've popped the SD card back into our handheld, and we just want to go down to Games List or ROMs, and go down to the Nintendo Power GBA ROM we just created. Press Start, and it is using multi-core, as you can see. It can take a little while to open, especially if you have hundreds of images, like we have, so just be patient. And after around 40 seconds, we're finally loaded. You navigate pages by pressing L and R. So R goes to the next page, L goes to the previous. If you hold down A and press L and R, it does skip 10 pages at a time. And if you hold B and press L or R, it does skip 100 pages at a time. At the moment, the images are pretty hard to read. So hold down A and press right on an image and it does let you zoom in. From here, you can use the D-pad to navigate around the little image. You can see fonts this large are readable, but as mentioned, if you want finer detail for smaller fonts, you would want to split your images horizontally as well. Pressing select brings up the controls menu and it does tell you all of the shortcuts. It mentions start and select does exit to Pogo Shell, but it doesn't really because we are not using a GBA flash cart. Press B to close it. Holding star and L does go into thumbnails mode. It does make it quite a bit easier to navigate the pages. From here, you can just press A to open up the image. This is obviously far from perfect and there are quite a few steps converting your comic books or magazines into compatible Game Boy Advance ROMs, but it is just another neat little thing that these cheap handhelds can do. I think that'll do it for today. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching.